Hello, good morning. Thank you very much for coming here to my talk. Uh, the, I am Jose Luis Gomez Muñoz from Tecnológico de Monterrey in Mexico. I am a, a calculus teacher. And uh, for this project, uh, I did collaborate with uh, Professor Luis Vargas Mendoza. He is a mechanical engineering professor. And with Rubén Darío Santiago Costa, he's a mathematics professor. And uh, the title is, as you can see, Cloud Apps for Mobile Learning of Calculus and Engineering Design. So, OK, here. Uh, well, as you know, there are many commercial apps for mobile learning. However, when the instructor has a very specific need, then the flexibility and power of the Wolfram language and its cloud deployed capabilities can be used to create specific solutions. That was actually the case uh, for a course on machine elements in mechanical design at our university. Engineering design requires many iterations of tedious calculations, and students must have time to analyze the result of each one and take decisions to perform the next iteration. The, the, that loop in a mechanical engineering design can be represented with this simplified model, okay, where the students have uh, some or the one, the designer has some general information. He is going to feed uh, specific information into the design operation. We'll have a result, and then the, it has to evaluate the result to see if it if already has uh, the correct element, the correct gear, or the correct uh, shaft, or whatever. If not, it has to go back. Now, in the case of uh, the students uh, of mechanical engineering, they were taking a lot of time in the part of the design operation. Right? And the instructor wanted them to have more time to spend in the evaluation time to see actually, well, we did all these calculations. Now, do we have a, a gear that is not the size or something like that, or microscopical or whatever? And, uh, and if, if it is the case, then go back and then go back. So uh, they were working before with uh, Excel, they were working with books, tables, and all of that. That was too clumsy. Okay, so the idea was to have an app, and it has to be a very specifically designed app, so that uh, they can work um, uh, uh, very fast or faster the design operation, and spend more time in the evaluation part. That was the idea. Now, uh, we started exploring uh, with the web capabilities with, of the form function. And we started to run in some problems, and we had to create some hacks and some ideas to, to work on this. For example, uh, here we have a very, a very simple code for a form function. And maybe you can see that uh, in the uh, output, it's supposed to be with colors. So where I have the color? Ah, here. The output is supposed to have some colors in the background. Now, if I actually run this app over here, the it runs very good, but we don't have the background. Okay, that's not yet implemented, or it was not yet implemented for the version 11.2 for the cloud that we were using this year. So now we figure out one way to solve this problem. The problem was to actually use the third argument of the form function to specify that the output is a GIF file. So if I now run this version that has GIF here as a third argument of the form function, that's uh, pretty much the same. And right here. There we go. Uh, and of course, this could be, yeah, you can make it larger to see it. Now, uh, and the same goes for uh, actually the mathematical notation. The best way we found to get it right was actually to use the final output as a GIF image. Maybe it's not the uh, ideal case, but there was one, one of the many hacks or many tricks we had to use to solve the problems that we were having, right? Uh, I will talk about some, about some of them now. Now, actually, um, a better technique to work with all of the things that we wanted to do would be ask, fu ask function and all of the ask commands related with ask function, but we avoided it because it was marked as experimental in the documentation at that time. And I think it still is. So that's why we went to use uh, the, <coughs> the form function. And in the case of these calculations, there are a lot of calculations there that you have to do. We choose to use a multi-page form function. Okay. Now, when using a multi-page form function, now we run into another problem. 
Uh, it seems, or I believe that's the way it works, that uh, each page in a multi-page formation is evaluated in a new, a new kernel. I think that it's a new kernel. And therefore, the, they, sometimes there is uh, uh, information that is lost when going from one page to the other, right? So not uh, the data that the user inputs. That's okay, because data that you, the user inputs is actually uh, it's going to be fed correctly into the next page, which is a, fu uh, a function. But if you have some variables that are calculated from that, sometimes, and that's the weird thing, not always, sometimes the values of those variables are lost. So uh, since the calculations uh, here were rather simple, the uh, thing that we did in order to solve this was that we used a width with uh, the calculations. Sorry, I, I minimize this, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, uh, you can see that here we have a width a structure with many things defined, and among them we have things like this. These are some, some uh, group of calculations that had to be done with, uh, from some of the input of the user. As you can see, they are very simple calculations. They are called here Calculo Cinematica. And uh, if we go down, down, down to the code, there's a lot of things in the width before actually going to the form function here. Finally, I have the form function. This is uh, the first uh, page of the form function. You will see it working in a moment. Now, this is the second page. This is the third page, and so on. And then, uh, in some moment, I need to do the calculations. And here you have, remember Calculo Cinematica was there? So here, the calculations are done from the input of the previous pages. Right? And now the thing is that uh, since, uh, as I told you, that information can be lost for the next page, in the, if, I, if I need it in the next page, I do it again. I mean, this was kind of a, maybe it's an ugly hack, but it works, okay? Because uh, otherwise the information is lost from one page to the other, right? And uh, so that's what we do, and uh, again, and again, and again, and as you can see, there are many pages here. Uh -huh. Actually, all of this, I am go just going to show you an example very fast uh, of this uh, uh, app running here. Let me show it to you here. And I will see if I can copy paste this. Because I want to. There. Just a moment. So, let's see if I. That's like what I want. OK. So I hope the, trans the translation is not so bad. We have, uh, this is the app for uh, calculating gears, or so for learning to calculate gears. I am just going to input some values here, just to give you some, some feeling of uh, how does it work. 25, 500. And that's the first page only, and then you go. And uh, it shows you some results. It asks you, you will, why you will like these results to be in the final screen. You can say no. And then uh, some more calculations. Some of them depend on the previous input of the user. Some of them don't. And, uh, and the student, the user, is shown at every step intermediate results. So maybe he decides already to go back. Uh, this is, uh, for example, uh, the useful uh, life. Uh, for the for the gear, maybe you can uh, ask for twenty thousand hours, etc. And it goes on and on and on and on and on, and it's showing you intermediate information. Let me see if we can have the translation here. There. So and uh, it goes on and on and on. A very long calculation, but now the students can do it very fast, reach the end, and see if they have a gear that makes sense, right? Because maybe they have a gear that uh, fulfills all the conditions, but it's a size or something like this. It will not work, all right? And that's exactly what uh, the instructor wanted. Then they want, he wanted them to spend time in that part, in the evaluation part. Uh -huh. So he will. He will have the students, and uh, I like to emphasize that they can use any device to to see and to work with the app, either a phone or a, an iPad or a computer or whatever. We also created a, a Bell Drive design app. Same idea. And uh, the advantage is that we can tailor that. We can specifically design for the needs of uh, the, 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 uh, the instructor. So, and uh, here I, I just show you a screenshot here below uh, of the 
of the um, app, you can see that in this case, we actually make the graph of the representing the belt and uh, the shaft here. And uh, well, uh, the thing was uh, very nice because the instructor was uh, very surprised that uh, not only did the students actually spend more time in the evaluation part, uh, one, uh, they, he had experience that they were able to actually generate several different successful designs. Not only one, but several that, that never happened to him before. Yeah, and then they, they came with several options that will solve the problem. Uh -huh. And uh, also uh, feedback from the students was in general positive. Here are some graphs, uh, well, showing that most of the feedback is positive. And uh, actually the interesting thing is that students were kind of uh, uh, the ambitious or demanding from the app. Now they wanted to have an animation, and they wanted to <laughs> can say, come on, please. <laughs> but uh, they, they wanted more, more, more from, from, the, from, the, from the app. Uh, OK, and now uh, after that experience with uh, this uh, mechanical engineering uh, design, now uh, we are starting to um, uh, explore adaptive learning, adaptive learning, sorry. And uh, here I have a scheme. Uh, there are many possibilities for making a scheme of adaptive learning. Here we have a scheme where uh, maybe the stu student enters here, uh, and one could be a, a first question. If the student gets it right, goes to end, uh, to the second um, level or the second set of questions. Maybe the first one is about uh, a graph of a function. The next one about the domain of a function. The next one is about a translation of functions, whatever, different topics, right? And he, if he gets it, everything right, boom, 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 yeah, he just finishes. But if he somewhere there starts to struggle and has some uh, question wrong, then uh, the app will, uh, make a second question of the same topic, maybe an, an easier one, right? Kind of what happens with uh, Duolingo when you are play, learning languages and it will adapt the kind of questions that it's sending to you. That's, that's the idea, right? And here, see, this is just a very simple scheme of, for, the, for that, where uh, you remain in the same topic, maybe with que uh, uh, questions that are simpler, and finally you go to the next level when you get it right, and all the history, all the paths that the student actually follow can be stored and can be used as uh, data for the teacher, right? Um, there are many schemes. This is only a, a, a first approach. Now, uh, in order to do that, uh, we use a form page. One, one, uh, once again, the same idea. We were shy of uh, using ask function, which could be the best tool for this because of the experimental status. So uh, we actually did learn how to use it with uh, form uh, with front page, one of the things that we had to solve is how to store the information of different students that might be using the app at the same time, and the information is not uh, overlapping or have a conflict. And actually, the solution uh, uh, turned to be very simple. That was, okay, we capture the ID of the student, we ask him or her to input the ID, uh, his, his student ID, and then the name of the variables has included the, the ID. Now. Uh, that did solve the problem, but uh, now I don't want you to see my Wolfram Cloud account because I have a lot, a lot, a lot of files with the names and, uh, and uh, of all, all the students and all the tries and all of that. So there is actually a better approach, which is not implemented here, which actually is use your URL build, right? The thing is that when you build an URL, sorry, uh, the different parts of the path are actually folders in the Wolfram Cloud. So you do that, and you have that your UID has, uh, for example, the student ID, that's going to be a folder in your Wolfram Cloud. And then you can have it organized there. Uh -huh. So uh, here in this code, and I am including the code because maybe you will want later to see, later to see this uh, notebook uh, from the presentation. Here, when we have the code, you can see that the name uh, here is just a string join for the name of a variable that is going to be safe in the cloud. Now, inst instead of that string jo join, we will have that your URL build uh -huh, in order to have this structure of folders to make it uh, a cleaner uh, uh, in the WordPress cloud. All right? and. Uh, Okay, uh, well, I also have here, well, this is too small, but I also have here uh, another thing that we were uh, finding when we were working with this 
um, I always go to the Mathematica Stack Exchange or to the community to see the kind of questions I have. And uh, I was kind of, uh, well, disappointed to see that there are not so many questions answered about uh, the use of the Wolfram Cloud. Yeah, yeah so uh, you have some question there and it will be some months before someone answers. And uh, well, I, I was kind of disappointed here. So uh, I, uh, we were trying actually to make posts over there in the community and in the Stack Exchange of all of these things. And I also have the links there trying to, well, increase the use of these powerful tools, of these beautiful tools, right? <clears throat> uh, well, one, one more time, our adaptive learning app uh, works in computer, laptop, uh, phone, yeah? And uh, just to give you a, uh, so you can see it there. Uh, as I told you, 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 the student will enter here the ID, all right? <clears throat> okay. And then we are going to start with uh, the questions. These are just, uh, well, the first topic in this case is about intervals. And uh, if uh, he doesn't have the correct answer, then we will remain in the topic of intervals, right? We will not go to the next topic, right? And then another question, and then another question, etc. And all the and, and all the path can be safe. So uh, uh, the next time we know how many times did he fail, did she fail, right? Or if he, she gets the answer right, then we go to the next topic, right? Well, which in this case, well, it was graph of functions, and uh, we have also a message, eh, well done, your answer was right, etc. right? Uh, and uh, so it's, it's, it's trying to have uh, this kind of uh, interaction with the, with the user, right? And uh, saving the information. Uh, okay, so, okay. So that was fast. So uh, we used the Wolfram language commands form function and form fetch in order to implement cloud apps for mobile learning. The ones for uh, mechanical design engineering have already been used with success. Uh, we, used, uh, we avoided the use of more advanced uh, as function family of commands because they are marked experimental. And uh, there was an advantage of that because we kind of uh, took uh, the form function and the form page commands to the to the edge or to the limit of what can be done with, with them, right? So uh, we, I think we have a, a very good grasp now of what can be done with those commands. Our apps uh, uh, for learning mechanical engineering design had a positive effect, which with the students being able to find several successful designs when traditionally they struggled to find only one, right? Um, it was also possible to implement an adaptive learning framework using the simple kind of front page command. And uh, during this process, we were surprised to find very few examples at the Wolfram community and uh, Mathematica Stack Exchange. We did contribute with our own findings, and now learning that uh, we will have these uh, repositories for notebooks and uh, other repositories, I am intending to create more kind of tutorials to use these commands so it, they, they, they get more, more use because they are beautiful. I mean, you make some beautiful apps with that. So, uh, okay. So one of the future work besides 3D printing <laughs> will be, uh, we are interested now that uh, we are starting to generate data to capture data from our students. Uh, well, uh, take advantage, learn, and take advantage of the um, uh, capacities of the Wolfram language for uh, um, data science and for um, um, machine learning in order to use that with uh, the data of our students. That, that, that would be one of the directions of the future work. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>